let's take a look in this lesson at subtracting real numbers. Now we have the same rules. Remember, adding and subtracting rules, uh, the signs, are, the rules are the same. We, if we have the same signs, we add them and keep the sign. If we have opposite signs, we're going to subtract the numbers and keep the sign of the larger. And we mean absolute value larger. So example one has negative 12 minus 8. Both of them are negative numbers. So what are we going to do? Well, we're really, they have the same sign. We'll add them together. It would be 20. And we have to keep that sign. It was negative. The answer is negative 20. Example two is a little different. I have two negatives right together. Look at these two negatives separated only by parentheses. I'm going to fix that. I'm going to change it to a positive sign. Remember, minus a negative is the same as plus a positive. So now I can, it's easy to see, 12 plus 5 becomes a positive 17. 3, with my fractions, I need a common denominator to subtract fractions. Well, my denominator I'm going to choose is going to be 6. It's going to be the closest number, the smallest I can get both 2 and 3 to become. So I'm going to say something over 6 minus something over 6. Well, let's translate. 2 to get to 6, I had to multiply times 3. Just working with that denominator there. So I multiply the numerator times 3, 3, 6. To get a 3 to become a 6, I multiply times 2. And 1 times 2 is 2. Now I can write everything over that common denominator of 6. Everything else goes in the numerator. And 3 minus 2, opposite signs. Remember, subtract and keep the sign of the larger, right? And the answer is 1 over 6. Example 4, let's straighten it out and get rid of some of these parentheses with pluses and negatives and double negatives before we try to do anything. First, I'm just going to say negative 16, and then I say plus a negative. That's going to be, I'm sorry, minus a negative is going to be plus a positive. It's the same as plus 3. Plus a negative 11 is the same as minus 11. And then I'll just write down minus 14. And this is a little clearer for me to work. I'll take the first two terms, negative 16 plus 3. They have opposite signs. I'll subtract and keep the sign of the larger one. And I'm just going to write everything else down. Don't try to do too many steps in your head. That's where you make mistakes. Let's do the next two terms, negative 13 minus 11. Well, they have the same sign, so I need to add them together and keep that sign. Then just bring down the minus 14, the negative 14 or minus 14. Now, I've got the same sign, so I have to add these together and keep the sign, which was negative, and the answer is negative 38. Example 5 has me with parentheses. So I'm going to handle what happens in parentheses first. Everything else I just write down. Inside parentheses, it is 3 minus 8. Opposite signs, I'll subtract and keep the sign of the larger. And now I have two negatives together. I'm going to turn that into a positive. And I have opposite signs now, negative 9, positive 5. I'll subtract and keep the sign of the larger. For problem 6, handling inside parentheses, 2 minus 3 is going to give me a negative 1. Remember, subtract if they're opposite signs and keep the sign of the larger, plus 5 squared. I can go ahead and do that. 5 squared is 5 times 5, or 25. Now I've got negative 1 plus 25. That's the same as 25 minus 1, isn't it? Or 24. For 7... Let's resolve some of this uh, absolute value parentheses and exponents and then worry about our, our uh, combining our terms. So absolute value of a negative 2 is a positive 2. Plus 6 squared is going to give me 36. Plus I'm going to have to work inside these parentheses. Negative 3 minus 8. Both of them are negative. I'll add them together and keep that sign. Now, I have the same operations, addition and subtraction. They're on the same level, so I'm going to work left to right. 2 plus 36 is 38, and it's plus negative 11, or could, you could have just written minus 11. 38 minus 11 is what we have, which is 27. We subtract and keep the sign of the larger. Now, let's do, let's do some substitution for number 8, and it's tricky substitution because pay attention here. For x, we're going to substitute in a negative number, a negative 5. If you're ever substituting in a negative, you have to be very careful that you don't lose a negative along the way. What we have is the absolute value, I'll just write the absolute value signs, of 5 times y, which is 4, minus, my minus is in my problem, see, 
minus, and the value I have to substitute in for x is negative 5. So minus negative. I've got two negatives together, don't I? This is where I have to be very careful not to lose one. The denominator, 6 times t, which is 10, was pretty easy. Let's go back to the numerator and see if we can fix some things here. I'm going to say this is the same as absolute value of, and I want to fix this, 5 times 4 plus 5. I want to take care of these double negatives first because they confuse me. I can go ahead and say 6 times 10 in the denominator is 60. And then in the numerator, I've got multiplication. I've got addition. I can't ever do absolute value until I have just one number inside the absolute value sign. So I'm going to do multiplication first. It's going to be the absolute value of 20 plus 5 over 60. And that's really the absolute value of 25 over 60, which is, of course, 25 over 60. Well, that's not the lowest form. Let's divide them both by a 5. We would end up with 5 in the numerator and 12 in the denominator, our lowest form of our fraction.